We continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is. We are on chapter 3, text 36. Arjuna Vacha Atakena Prayukto Yam Papam Charati Purushaha Anichan Api Varshneya Balat Iva Niyojitaha Arjuna said, O descendant of Vrishni, by what is one impelled to sinful acts, even unwillingly, as if engaged by force? So Krishna has been telling Arjuna how to perform activities without attachment. Uh, activities, perform activities for the pleasure of Krishna. That wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you offer the result to me, connect your activities to me. So now Arjuna is asking, what is it that one does sinful activities? Why is it? It's like force, you know, when it, someone might not want to do it, but what is it that someone is forced to do it? A lit, so purpose by his divine grace, Isi Bhaktivedanta, Swami Shla Prabhupada, a living entity as part and parcel of the Supreme is originally spiritual, pure, and free from all material contaminations. So this is our true identity. We are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. And as the Supreme Lord is pure, we are also uh, pure. As the Supreme Lord is spiritual, we are also spiritual. As the Supreme Lord has no material contaminations, we also have no material contaminations. Because we are his part and parcel like a drop of ocean water, has all the qualities same as the full ocean. Of course, the quantity is totally different. We cannot compare the quantity of the salt in a drop of ocean water, compare it to the quantity of salt in the full ocean, but the quality is the same. Similarly, we being parts and parcels of the Lord, we have the, his qualities, but in very minute, minute degree. We are eternally Krishna's parts and parcels. Therefore, by nature, he is not subject to the sins of the material world. But when he is in contact with the material nature, he acts in many sinful ways without hesitation, and sometimes even against his will. So, but what happens? The spirit soul is spiritual. Then what happens? Why is he acting in sinful ways without hesitation? Even sometimes as if he's being forced to do it. As such, Arjuna's question to Krishna is very sanguine as to the perverted nature of the living entities. Although the living entity sometimes does not want to act in sin, he is still forced to act. Sinful actions are not, however, impelled by the super soul within, but are due to another cause, as the Lord explains in the next verse. So someone might say, oh yeah, I, I was impelled to do this sinful activity because the Paramatma within me told me to do it. No, the Krishna is never going to indulge anyone in sinful activities. Why would he? He does not want any one of us to suffer. He's Supreme Lord. He wants us always to be happy. So what is the reason that Krishna explains in the next verse? What is the reason that we, living entity, although we are pure and we are um, eternally Krishna's parts and parcels, we are spiritual, then why are we here in this material body? And Krishna is going to tell us it's only due to lust. It's due to our material desire. This is what he will tell us in the next verse. It's because of our material desire that we want to continue living in this material world. We want to continue to pretend to enjoy without Krishna. We want to continue to pretend to control, to, to own. And that's the reason. Because we have this desire, we continue to uh, perform sinful activities 
in this material world and which binds us to this material world, doesn't let us go away from the material world. So we can hear about it more. Uh, we'll read the text tomorrow. Hmm? We'll read about the text tomorrow and we'll stop here for Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Bhagavad Gita ki Jai Shla Prabhupada ki Jai Gaur Krimnande Hari Bol Hare Krishna.